Hello and welcome to Start Up With Poland, the show that deep dives into Poland's startup ecosystem and takes you on a journey to explore key trends, key technologies and the key people behind them. My name is Tessa McKeever and I am your host. Today, we will be tackling the topic of how AI has changed sales and marketing in 2023 and speaking with Danish Sumro, founder of the startup Devi AI and also a leader of a community of digital nomads that is 160,000 people strong. So Danish really knows a lot about creating communities and keeping them engaged online. I'm really happy to have caught Danish as he happens to be in Poland at the moment, as actually he's really a citizen of the world and changes location regularly. Danish has quite a soft spot for Poland and we'll find out more about that too. Okay, so Danish, welcome. Fantastic to have you here in the studio. So good to be here. I'm really excited. First of all, Devi itself. Um, I mean, a lot has changed in the marketing space in 2023. Uh, tell us, why Devi? What has changed? What's going on? I think it's been an over marketing in the last six years. I should say that so it's time for anti-marketing. <laughs> so that means you are doing marketing, but not the traditional way, like cold outreaching, sending messages to people. You know, you are just blasting your messages across on social media, running ads. That's actually frustrating the people who are not looking for your product, right? So mm -hmm. uh, that was the old way, which is kind of IC is gone. As you could okay. see, there are privacy changes in different platforms. There are studies came out, came out recently, which says that people are literally numb to ads. They just like muscle memory. They just don't even watch. So it's not working anymore. You're just mm -hmm. burning your money. So um, the new, I think the future of marketing would be intent-based marketing. That means if someone is looking for it, you only reach out to that, like ultra-focus. So it's called intent-based intent -based marketing. It's already been there, but not being utilized by the organization. So that's the future, and that's why I built a tool called Devi that actually monitors social media to find the, the intent and connect uh, with the advertisers. Okay, well, that's very interesting. I mean, we hear more and more about, you know, automation. It's a real buzzword at the moment. But how does that actually impact, you know, personal client relationships? That's something that sort of slightly worries me or causes, you know, sort of a bit of distress. What's, what's going to go on with those relationships? Yeah. As you already know, ChatGPT AI is taking over the world right now. Everybody's uh, just typing the prompt, getting something, and there's like a AI video right now. So. There will be more and more automated content, but would it be valuable? Would it people feel like connection with it? That's a big question. I've already been seeing it. No, because it's, you know, there's some humanness is missing in it. So um, if you go on Devi website, we actually we are using this opportunity to mm -hmm. go anti-AI sort of like, so we have talked to real human. It's quite oxymoron because we are an AI tool and we are telling talk to real human because what I feel where human needs to be connected with another human, we should only use humans. And for automated boring tasks, for repetitive tasks, yes, use the AI. So I think automation is only used where it's required, it's going to be highly valuable, but human will, if your organization use humans, that will bring the massive returns on investment. Okay, so it's sort of a combination of, you know, and knowing when to use real humans and when to use the AI. Um, but what do you see the future of AI being? You've mentioned, you know, ChatGPT. It's obviously the, one of the key things going on in, in this year, in 2023. Um, but what do you think, if you were to make a prediction, is the sort of medium to long term yes. future of AI in business and, yes. you know, for startups yes. as well? I think every startup, like in last ten years, well, like every startup is a software company. Now it will be changed to every company will be an AI company. There has to be a component which is used. There is going to be a negative impact as well because AI is directly competing with low and medium skills human being. Mm -hmm. So the human capital needs to be on top of their game if they want to, you know, offer value to organizations. So. Uh, so that's a little bit downside, but in the future, there will be more value. People will be focused on more value creation rather mm -hmm. just 
management of the work or task documents and filling Excel sheet because all those tasks are important to run the organization, but they're not actually creating value for the end customer. Mm -hmm. So AI is going to be uh, you know, pushing everybody on the top of their game and high skill level or creative level will be thriving while low and medium skill level have to make their softer skills actually better to add more value. Okay, well, interesting. We all need to be brushing up on our skills to be on that top level in that case. And Danish, you, aside from uh, Devi, um, you founded another company previously some years ago in Poland, but actually you're a citizen of the world, if I can call it uh, that. You run a community of 160,000 digital nomads, which is amazingly impressive. Yeah. Uh, but you do keep on coming back to Poland, despite the fact that you know, you're living really all, um, across you know all the continents all the world you know what is it about poland that draws you back oh my gosh guys poland is home you know my heart is here um what a beautiful country is highly underrated nobody knows and i would encourage poland to market itself better because you know there's a massive incredible culture traditions and innovation i mean if you look around the countries in europe You'll be surprised that Poland is like, I would say, number one based on my own experience. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm Canada, US, Chile, I've been everywhere in a startup accelerator space, and Poland is doing amazing. So, what is it? I think the, the culture, the food, of course, the people, this is, of course, on the other side, but also for business growth. Uh, the innovation uh, and the investment availability here in the infrastructure is just mind-blowing. So just keep coming me back and I am the promoter of Poland around the world. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Um, back on to you know, your community of sure. digital nomads. I mean, how do you actually create a community that is so large, that is so diverse, that is really you know, spread out all over the world and actually keep them actively together. What's your secret sauce? Yeah, so I think people, the life goals of masses around the world is changing, you know, as you know, the new generation is coming in, they have a different life goals, rather uh, possession, possessions of material objects or you know, buying a traditional life, traditional life goals, making a big house and family, their goals are changing. They want to travel more, they want to experience more. Um, so that was the trend. And of course, I created the community, which is for people who work online from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So both of the things, the pattern or the trends in the society were, and then I offer a space where they can talk about it and how they can, you know, implement different lifestyles where they can travel non-stop while also working productively. So that's strike and people join in and then we, uh, you know, there are different strategies that you do, but we have a lot of fun and we share travel content. So that grew and it's been seven years as a volunteer. I, I am managing this community is the biggest one right now. And, and yeah, we are talking a lot about Poland in our community. Well, that's good to hear as well. I mean, I can imagine that obviously it's possible to actually live a lifestyle where you're being a, a nomad and traveling from country to country if you do have an online job obviously it's not really going to work if you know I don't know you're a gardener of a specific <laughs> garden etc etc um, but do you see startup founder as a popular uh, profession within that community or is it more you know taking sort yes. of tasks from from I don't know consultancies or so on yeah what? so you'd be surprised that I met so many Polish people in Thailand last winter so Poland, Poland digital nomads kind of get activated. Um, and so there's different themes or different occupations. Yes, business owners always, startup founders always because they're the boss, right? They're the freedom. Uh, but the remote only companies, there's a rise of remote only companies. Mm -hmm. And also the other like bigger organizations after COVID, they saw this opportunity. Oh, this is possible actually. A, a person can still work while not being in an office. So that creates the, the freelancers or all kind of occupations mm -hmm. started trying or experiencing this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So yes, before it was only tech people, but now everyone, everyone who works in an office, they could actually live this lifestyle and a lot of Polish people are living this. Well, I'm not surprised that so many Polish people were in Thailand in the winter. <laughs> the, the weather, I'm sure, was considerably better. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it must be so fascinating to actually you know, meet people from so many different countries in 
different countries, yes. you know. So, so I guess it must be a very special, uh, special sort of feeling and moment when when you have that opportunity yes. to do that. Yes, it is an incredible feeling, and um, you know there's a financial benefits to it because the cost of living is called geo arbitrage. It's a technical mm -hmm. term. People make money like in some Poland. But Thailand, of course, cost of living is way cheaper and the quality of life, you can still maintain a similar kind of quality of life. You know, like you yeah. can have a chef, every meal is cooked for you, you have your own apartment, half of the cost. So why wouldn't somebody like it? And the weather, of course, and the beaches. Yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely. I can see that there are so many wins of this situation. Uh, but then what actually brought you to being a digital nomad? Well, you yes. know, what, what's your background that led you into yeah. this lifestyle? So, I was living in uh, Toronto's home and I was living there as a, a typical thing. You wake up at 5.30 a.m. in the dark and you shove the bread in your mouth and drive <laughs> to the downtown office and then stuck in a traffic for two hours uh, only to get 14, uh, like a 10 days a year holiday. I mean, in Poland, I think people get way better <laughs> six weeks holiday. But in North America, if you're starting, it's two weeks holidays. So and then six months is quite cold. So kind of, it's kind of. We know of, something about that. Too. Yeah, <laughs> you know it, right? So that was a motivation enough to find a, like a solution to this because I'm like I'm not going to do it until I retire because this is not you know doing very good for my well-being. So I start finding alternative solutions, and that's I met some of the people who were living this lifestyle. So it's like a hack. You can be all, all year round on holidays and all year round working. So I'm like, wow, why not a lot of people are doing it? So, and then I started doing and became a sort of a digital nomad. Okay, well, fantastic. But what's, what are your plans, both for Davi, for you personally? Yes. You know, what's, what's next on the table? Where will we find you and oh. what will Davi be doing? Yay, for my summer roaster, I call. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm Lyon, I want to live in France, Lyon one month, and I'm going to Copenhagen wow. for one month in September, and I want to see the Northern Lights at the end of September and then everybody migrate. There's a pattern, winter comes, so I will migrate to South America. So that's my personal lifestyle. Devi, Devi is growing incredible. We have 4,000 businesses using Devi. Oh, fantastic. So every day we are working on it, so it's growing. And my plan is to build more AI tools, productivity mm -hmm. tools, which help people uh, or companies to automate the boring tasks while keep the humans. Uh, so humans can also enjoy their work from the beach, right? So that's the Devi plan to grow to 10,000 businesses using it in one year. Um, and I am here right now and Poland is home, so I will always be coming back in Poland in summer. And <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's a little bit of my plans. Okay, well, wonderful. Well, I am keeping my fingers very crossed for you to get to those 10,000 users for Devi. You know, fantastic tool. I think we would all like to get rid of the boring parts and focus on, you know, sort of the strategic, yes. you know, uh, human parts of our work. And, you know, have a fantastic summer, fantastic travels. I'll certainly be following, you know, where you are and what you're doing, what you're eating. And, you know, look forward to seeing you next time in Poland. Thank you very much. And I, Poland is home and I'm so grateful to the Polish people to welcome me and make me feel home. Well, you are very welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, audience, for listening to us today. See you next time.